Hello, I'm Coach Elka and I am the Lifestyle Guru. I'm about to be on Prosper's show. In this episode, we're going to be talking about how to make your next chapter the best chapter. So if you want to get the most out of life and create a more fun and fulfilling, purposeful life, listen in. We're about to start. Now, ladies and gentlemen, Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show, where we explore pathways to living a life full of bloom. Now, I'm your host, Braspa Tarulinga, and today we've got a guest whose name embodies her mission. She's none other than Coach Elke, the maestro of crafting lives, teeming with purpose, passion, and plenty of pizzazz. Now, Elke, how are you doing today? I'm doing fabulous. How are you today, Prosper? Uh, I can't wait to jump in to what we're about to talk about because you talk about making the next chapter the best for a lot of people, especially those who have those that have gone beyond the fabulous 50 mark. Now, it's fantastic to have you on the show today. Let's just dive in. Could you maybe share with our viewers a little bit about your journey and what actually led you to become the lifestyle guru that you are today? Thank you. Well, that's a big title, being a lifestyle guru. <laughs> Thank you. But um, probably wouldn't call myself that. Uh, for me, it's literally about wanting to help people, you know, get the skills and be able to craft a life that's in alignment and lights them up. And one of the big things that stop that from happening is we've you know, we get stuck in obligation and we get so busy, we actually forget that there's other options out there for us. So, yeah, one of one of the things that I'm quite passionate about is teaching people how to self-coach because once you can manage your mind, then you can actually, um, it's going to say cliche, master your life. <laughs> but it's true, though, because that's the key to it, Like be, because it doesn't matter what circumstances are out there. It's the thoughts that we think about them that leads to how we feel about it, which obviously leads into the actions that we take, which leads to the results. And, you know, there you've got your life. And so if you can get that foundational part of it right, which is um, being really aware of your thoughts, where they're coming from, uh, and choosing to think purposefully, that's the game changer. Absolutely. And thank you so much for sharing that because once you can self-coach and you can actually find your way in a dark room, things will start taking shape. But for you, this wasn't always like this. How did you step onto the scene? Oh, it absolutely was not like this at all. Um, yeah, so it is. It's about empowering yourself to you're like to, well, making empowered decisions in life, right? And um, I was a small business owner most of my life and I accidentally started uh, my second business. My first business uh, I started in Sydney and it was uh, short-lived because my mum ended up passing away so I moved back to my hometown here in Canberra and accidentally started my second business. <laughs> I had no idea what I was doing. But I was young and quite ignorant of what it took, which was probably worked in my favour because I just went for it. And the things that I didn't know what to do, I reached out. So I, that's how I got introduced to coaching because I effectively had a business coach for most of that journey and that made the difference and that grew my business uh, exponentially. Like it was, it that really worked well and because it was about the mindset because I'm not I'm I'm pretty sure other business owners will understand this but your business ends up being a reflection of where you're at. So if you've got your head in the game uh, and you're thinking clearly, you've got a much better flowing business that's that's working well. Absolutely. And um you did mention you had a brick and mortar business. What 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 sort of industry were you in before you got Yeah, so I used to have it was like a day spa day spa slash beauty salon. And um, this is, you know, my my passion about just talking to people. And it was it was such a safe space for people to come into and just talk about what was really going on in their lives. So it was very unfiltered conversations. And I have always, since I was a teenager, been obsessed with um, 
like learning about human behavior and about psychology and, um, you know, just how we work. Like, why do we do what we do? And how can we make what we do better? Like, how can we, how can we create, how can we live that, that, that good life that we all crave? Uh, and had not, did not have the answers <laughs> at all for a very long time until I actually uh, sold my business. I ended up burning out. So I sold the business, then climbed the corporate ladder, burnt myself out and ended up having a whole stack of um, operations. Like this year I was in and out of hospital like four or five times. It was, you know, when you start to face mortality, it changes your perspective in life. And um, the solution for the, the doctors was basically to keep me on pain meds to manage that. But all they did, they just you know, sounds harsh, but basically made me fat, slow and stupid. Like that medication just fuddled my brain and it was awful. Um, so I went back to the doctor and I was like, I really, I can't live like this. Like this is awful. Like I don't, I'm not living. This is, I feel like a zombie. I'm like lights are on, nobody's home. And she goes, well, I don't have anything else to offer you. And I was like, what, nothing? Like seriously nothing? <laughs> and she was like, well, the only thing I can think of is perhaps to send you to a pain psychologist. I'm like, I'm in, let's do it. That's when I actually started learning about how the brain works and how much control we actually have, but how little we talk about it. Now neuroscience and neuroplasticity is becoming better known, which is brilliant because it is such a, you know, that makes a difference when you actually understand that you have a human brain and it, it, acts in certain ways that you, you know it, we have those hard wirings in our brain when you understand that then you, you stop buying into it you stop creating drama for yourself you start leading a better quality of life you start making better decisions mm. so that's yeah oh, that was like my that. game changer <laughs> absolutely because I, I visually believe for us to live the life that we crave for and want to we need to learn how to actually use our brain in order for it to give us those ideas because there's two uh, parts of the brain you know the conscious and the subconscious but not a lot of people have a clue on how to actually manipulate that but i'm still hung up on you know your day spa days people that go to a day spa seem to have their time money and um lifestyle in order did you find that that was the sort of clientele that you were sort of uh, picking up all oh, what were those conversations that you were having with people at that time yeah it's interesting it wasn't this is this can be gosh we could spiral on this topic it's one of those things of we're conditioned to think that you know having a long bath or having that glass of wine at the end of the day or um you know going to the day spa that is that self-care well I mean, it can be part of it, but it's actually not going to change your life. Like what effectively it does is calm your nervous system, but it's not actually going to change what's actually causing your discords in your life. Like you're just putting a Band-Aid on it. So, I mean, definitely pamper yourself and make yourself feel good. That's, you know, I'm totally for that. But then go a little bit deeper. Like, what are the decisions that you're making? What are the thoughts that you're thinking in your life that are leading you to feel this way, that are leading you to choose the things that you're choosing, to leading you to have those conversations that you're having um, and the discords that you're having and feeling, you know, when we live in obligation, we then begin to feel resentful because our we get empty. And that's the thing that we have to stop is to be to stop selling ourselves to have all this massive amount of external validation, making everybody else happy uh, to feel good about ourselves because it doesn't work. It just exhausts us. Absolutely. I quite like that. And you then moved on. I mean, sorry to hear about your mom's passing. Um, you then moved on to corporate. What were you doing in, in that space? Yeah, so... Um, I went, gosh, I had a bit of a journey. So I had a few years, after I sold the salon, um, I had a few years in real estate. And um, I, what I, the part that I enjoyed about it was, like, that's quite stressful for people selling their family home and finding a new place. I'm actually going through that right now. <laughs> but, like, the part that I loved was helping people um, and be, being able to help them keep their head in the game because it would, you know, 
and 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 be able to get past those emotional hurdles that come up when you you know when you sell a house and you know keep it keep focused on what you want in in that next chapter of your life but the actual culture of real estate that I found very exhausting um so I then ended up uh going uh for the next few years I went into interior architecture and that was awesome I just I you know I just did a deep dive in learning with the building industry and I worked with again what my job was to work with clients find out what they wanted to be able to then translate that information to the designers to the architects and then part of the job also was them to project manage to make sure everybody stayed on budget, on time, and everyone keeps talking to themselves to to each other to keep the communication open. That wasn't stressful at all. <laughs> <laughs> no. um, yeah, at the end of that, I um, towards the yeah after a few years, I actually got headhunted by a um, like a, a how would you describe it? I was basically in the um, like in the in the building industry but it's like account manager so then I started dealing with I became then the account manager that spoke to the architects and the designers and the builders and the developers to sell that product um and I was on the road a lot and then you know it was it was exhausting I had um a young child at home I had a home I had a garden I had my my dog it was it was really hard and I ended up basically burning myself out and that's when I was like okay I took that time uh for my 50th birthday I took a year off and I gave that um I gave that that was my present to myself I didn't have a gap year when I was younger so this was my 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 midlife gap year <laughs> and so during that year, I really dug deep and I was like, okay, what do I want to do more of? What do I want to do less of? What is like, you know, those really gold coaching questions of what is it that you're, what, what, what do you want to do? What's your ide- ideal day look like? What does your ideal week look like? What is your, you know, what, you know, if you look in your future self, if you're reflecting back 20 years from now, what, what advice would you give yourself? Because it was really interesting to watch my thoughts about taking that time off um, and and not doing anything. Like that was going from working uh, constantly to then having that time off was a really, really big adjustment. And so I started talking to, you know, people who had, you know, retired and how they kept meaning and purpose in their life. And I talked to people who had started a, a second business in in uh, or, a, or a business later on in life. And so all these, you know, I just talked to lots of different people and started to get ideas for myself. And I was a really qualified organizational coach and I didn't want to go back to doing that, I sort of missed that step with the, with the career thing before. Um I wanted to do my own thing because I wanted to have that freedom to work with whoever I wanted when I wanted and be able to do what's best for that person in front of me as opposed to what was best for the organisation because sometimes that was in conflict and that didn't feel good for me. It was out of alignment. So that was a that was one of the things that uh, was a game changer for me and that's then again, quite naively, it was like, all right, well, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do it. It was, you know, post-COVID, everyone's used to doing online. Um, you know, we can, I can do this and I can, um, you know, start this second business, which is what I've done now. And I feel like the online, learning all the online things has been huge. Like there is, it's never ending. Like the technology never stops <laughs> changing. You feel like you get your head wrapped around something and then it changes again and you've got to learn a whole new set of things. But, you know, it's a good space. It's something that it works for me and I'm able to help a lot more people than, than you know, before that where it was literally only you could only work with people that were, you know, in your uh, vicinity. So yeah. that's a little summary. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And thank you so much for taking us on that journey because that really then um, ties together everything that you have done. Because from my, um, what I've just noticed, you basically are 
a relationship builder, a people's person. Because if you look at the spa days, that's all people. And then real estate and then the architecture, um, you know, connecting the architects with the client. I can imagine the stress because both of these people speak a totally different language. And you had to translate that, um, yeah, yeah. you know, what clients wanted and what, what is possible. And, you know, half of the times people don't understand that. Now you've just packaged it up into um, a really neat package and you giving people those fundamental tools for having a quality, um, you know, life, especially, you know, after they've gone past the age of 50 and good on you for taking that time off because it's like, like uh, I was explaining to you earlier, you know, you literally, um, you know, represent like a bow. You had to pull yourself back in order to catapult yourself into the future. So during this year, did you go anywhere or did you just stay put? And um, how did you then fill up that time? Because like you said, you didn't know what to do with yourself. Now I'm that so didn't. You know, yeah. <laughs> and it's so common. Like I hear so many people um, who have, you know, who, who are in middle age and, and beyond who have worked so hard all of their life that they haven't like delved into having a, a passion or a hobby or something that they are really invested in because they're so exhausted literally just from raising a family, working, holding it, you know, all of that sort of thing. And so tank's empty. Like, And when we're that exhausted, the thought of actually then taking on something new doesn't bring pleasure. <laughs> it's like, oh, my gosh, that's another thing on my plate and where all you want to do is take things off your plate. So that was for me. That was what I did when when I um took that year off. I just literally took everything off my plate, and then was like really sat with what what are the things that I used to do when I was a kid, for example. And I was like, I just absolutely love doing painting, and I loved doing pottery, and so I got into that. I fixed up my garden, and um you know did all those little jobs around the house, and then it was and that's when things started to evolve because then I was started having other people starting to ask me about my journey because they were curious they wanted to they they didn't feel brave enough to do that themselves but when they saw somebody else do it and could talk and could relate to it and could have those conversations also particularly with you know they were coaching conversations but they were curious about how can they do that for themselves which is why I've created the program, The Lifestyle Creator, because it is the whole point of that is to go, okay, you have a human brain, this is how we're wired, plus you've got your con social conditioning of this is the impact, like these are all the filters that you look through life with, which is your unique experience. This is who you are now. So the bits that you like and are working for you, great, keep those. But the bits that aren't working, okay, how do you then create lasting change? How do you find what is in alignment with your authentic self? What is it that you want to, what lights you up? So, and that's where most people get stuck. And that's where it is literally a skill, like changing those neural networks, like making those different synapses connect in your brain it's actual brain training and initially it's exhausting because your brain actually uses a lot of energy <laughs> and it feels uncomfortable because, again, the way we're wired, we seek the familiar. Anything that's different is exhausting. We shy away from it. We, we will come up with all the reasons why we shouldn't do it. <laughs> Absolutely. And, but then we get more of the same, right? <laughs> Absolutely. And I can only imagine because... As you say, you are all engrossed in all of these things that were happening around you. Just like fish do not see the water that they swim in and neither can people see the air that they're breathing. So by you extrapolating yourself, you could now see, wait a minute, I could breathe. I could literally be, do and have happier existence without me um, you know having to beg my doctor for pain medication um yeah. just so that I could leave another day now there are all of these silent sort of saboteurs that a lot of people don't quite see and they might actually plague a lot of individuals sort of life maybe like we say people don't see it unless somebody actually shines a light on that which is what you're now doing for people could you maybe yeah, shed that light on, you know, what these social pressures really 
are and how they're hindering personal growth for a lot of people without them uh, realizing and how your program, you say the lifestyle creator uh, program is, you know, going to combat all of that. Yeah, it's definitely, it, it's a, it's the first step to start doing it. Like it's not a huge program. There's, there's three modules in it. And what the feedback that I've gotten is that people actually want to do it together with me. So um I am putting my house on the market and selling it at the moment, but next month I'm hoping to then get a, well, I'm not hoping, I will. I'm going to start a, a co cohort, a group co coaching cohort. So maximum of 10 people. So we'll actually go through the program together because uh, sometimes you get stuck. Like you can't get out of your own head. You don't actually see where your blocks are. And that's where it's really helpful when you've got someone, you know, holding your hand or shining the light on, as you say, uh, through that progress because it can be overwhelming and when you know when we start when we start anything new it's daunting it's um we we feel so much resistance in ourselves and we just end up you know not not being able to change the things that actually are easily changeable but nobody's shown us the steps how to do that and you know when you just referred back about when I saw the pain psychologist, and starting to learn those fundamentals on, you know, how the brain works or the rest of it, I was just thinking everybody needs to know this. Why aren't we teaching this in schools? Like this is huge. And so that that was the that was the instigator for me. I'm like, I was like, everybody needs to know this. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, there's people that are banking on that knowledge being put out, not being put out there, because the more people don't know, the more the pharmaceutical industry gets, you know. Yeah. And you just get numbed out. And then we end up leading these numb lives where we then scroll endlessly on social media, or we just end up Netflixing all night, or, you know, whatever we do to numb out, overeat, overdrink, overexercise, whatever the overing that you're doing, it's all about distraction and not actually fully engaging in life because get uncomfortable with your thoughts and then you don't know what to do with them and then and you know and that's that's a cycle that I want to stop it's just like these are all the like a lot of the a lot of the problems that we have where we where we feel those blocks yes it's the way that you know the human condition how the brain's wired but when we are aware of that we can then make a different choice and then the other big thing is like we are so conditioned in our society to look outwards, to look for that external validation. And it's a really, really disempowering way to live. And, you know, we're starting to get more, there's starting to be a bit more of a movement with it. And, I mean, it resonated a lot more with the younger generations, but like that Barbie movie that they put out, like they talked about all the different ways where, We've been conditioned to think certain ways and we need to have, you know, we need to have all of these things to be happy or to be worthy. And it's not true. Like that, that is a bottomless pit that, and, and you know, it's also a multi-billion dollar industry to keep us feeling unworthy. Because <laughs> <laughs> you can't sell random stuff to people who know that they don't need it. Like it's not, you know, it's, it's empty. <laughs> <laughs> you know, companies like uh, what what's that L'Oreal or Laurier or um, any of those makeup sort of uh, brands would completely run out of business if, if women or people get to understand their own self worth. But these things that are keeping them in that sort of space. Like you said earlier on, you know, you started to start feeling fat, slow, and stupid. And <laughs> when somebody is in that vegetative position, that's when that whole 15 seconds on Netflix asking you if you're still watching this episode so it goes to the next one will actually keep you logged in for as long as you are there while you're thumping through social media that is making you feel inadequate and then the cycle just keeps going like that but you cut that um cycle for yourself you put a pattern break by taking time off taking yourself out of you know the humdrum of everything else that was happening in your life now indulge me here for a little bit Elke. What you went through sounds to me 
like a rite of passage, right? So where I come from in my, you know, tradition, when boys get to like 16 and I think girls at like 13, you're called in by village elders and then they proverbially tap you on the shoulder and say, hey, it's your turn to lead. So pretty much you are then taught how to be, do and have, you know, um, a mature and happier existence, which then when you come back from that, you can now engage in adult um, activities. And also you can now engage in adult conversations and um, be given tasks and responsibilities, um, you know, in society. So I'm now thinking to what you're saying that the culture that we live in, we're just taught that you go to kinder, you go to grade school, you go to high school, uh, go to university, get a job or start a business, um, get married, get kids, go to your doctor, get the medication, and then eventually you leave this earth without any pattern break or any, you know, sort of rite of passage or telling you that it's your turn to lead. And I feel like what you are now taking people through this lifestyle creator program is somewhat of a rite of passage for those that you're going to be handholding um, moving forward. I don't know. Have I connected the dots there a little bit or am I off? Yeah, yeah, because when you're starting to make changes like that, it can be scary and because it's unknown and our brains will uh, it's like a, a a toddler having a tantrum. It will it it will go kicking and screaming um, and rebel against change. It's it's again it's how we're hardwired because of that safety thing. Um, but when we can understand all of this resistance that we're having is purely a biological response for safety, then we can actually move through it with confidence and making sure we do it with clarity. And that's the difference because without having meaning and purpose in our life, we feel that emptiness. And, you know, there's a lot of people that have a, have had a wonderful career or still have a wonderful career and enjoy it, but then there's also others that have not had that blessing to be able to find that space and they don't actually get that sense of fulfilment of meaning and purpose through work. And you know, then they you know they they have their family, which is of course meaningful and, and fulfilling. But then also kids grow up and they move and they have their own life. And then what's left for you? And then there's this empty nest syndrome. And the same thing happens with retirement when people retire. There's over there's a forty percent spike in clinical depression because they don't have any identity outside of their work. And so you know. It's about cultivating that and it's about getting clear on what does it actually mean for you? Like what matters most to you? Not what you've been told to think, not not by other people's standard, not by what you see on, you know, on the social media or Netflix or whatever it is, but authentically you. And it can be really random, like really, really random things that, you know, your sense of meaning could be as, you know, as random as rehabilitating sick plants and being able to, you know, be able to, you know, you might have a green thumb and you get a really deep sense of fulfilment out of doing that when a friend who does not have a green thumb and be able to give that, you know, a beautiful, healthy plant back to them. <laughs> I just pull that out of the air. But do you know what I mean? It can be, and it's also, we also look for like big things that are going to be big life changes. But when you think about it, it's these small compounding things these small choices that we make the small activities that we do that all compound to actually give us um, a full and wonderful life because we do need variety like we and we do need to feel significant some way and so do that with authenticity and with integrity as opposed to doing what other people tell you to do which is never going to be in alignment you need to find that out for yourself but again we don't get um, we don't get taught that stuff. <laughs> Absolutely, and for those that are looking to either be initiated or create a life that they don't want to escape, what would be the best way that they can get a hold of you, LK? So I have a website, so coachelka.com.au. So Elka is E-L-K-E, <laughs> and uh, yeah, also on socials as well.
Absolutely. I'll make sure that all those links are in the show notes below. Now, there's one thing. As soon as I came to Australia, okay, um, there's one statement that has stuck with me, and I think you would resonate with this. A lot of the people around here always have this statement to say, nah, she'll be right, mate. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, you know, we'll figure it out when it happens. You know, you don't have to go and pork a stick at a crocodile if it's you know if it's lying down there leave it as it is you know if you throw things at a crocodile they might actually ask you to go and retrieve them so we don't want that happening so for those who might be hesitant to maybe get started on this journey first of all what are they missing out on and um what sort of words of encouragement can you also advise them to um you know take on especially when it comes to what you're offering Look, I think that we have this, we get really scared of emotions. But when you actually look at what an emotion is, it is basically a transient sensation in the body that goes. But as adults, we get taught not to express them, to hold them in, not to be able. And I think when you start to to go a little bit deeper about the things that block you, you start having things that come up. And that can feel confronting. And a lot of people get worried about doing that, thinking, oh, my gosh, if I open that door, then I'm going to, you know, it's going to be all bad and I'm going to be a mess forever. And you're not. Like it's it's transient. It's, you know, yes, things can come up, but then when you've dealt with it, then you actually have a this beautiful freedom in your life to start to be able to have authentic choices, empowered choices about what you want to do with moving forward. And the other thing, you have the clarity to say no, what's not in alignment with you anymore. And you don't, you stop feeling resentful. You don't feel obligated anymore. You do things that you want to do and you do it with a clean heart as opposed to doing it, you know, with the invisible barter system. It's like, all right, I do this for you, but then you owe me. Like all of those like those ick feelings and those um, things that lead to drama down the track, all of those, you stop making decisions that lead you down those paths. And so it's a calmer, more fulfilling, happier, easier life. It, and that's like for me, that was the one thing. It was always about creating uh, an easier life. But to get to the easier life, you actually have to do the hard things first. So... <laughs> Absolutely. Not a lot of people want to expend energy and burn calories, like you said, having to figure it all out. You know, they'd just rather go for the path of least resistance. Now, you know, let's say these people, you know, have maybe given up, which is what I see a lot of people have, but they still have an opportunity to influence younger people. Like you were talking about empty nesters and things of that nature. They still have access to their grandkids. They still have access to their kids and other you know, Gen Zs that are coming up there. Uh, what sort of advice would you maybe impart to those people just in case they've given up on their life, but they cannot then ruin the lives of other people, you know, and maybe put it in a way that you wish somebody would have told you this when you were younger, um, you know, some sort of advice that people can take on. You can change your, you can start to change your brain in less than a week. You just got to know how. And that's the whole thing. And that's, that's where I see that empowerment piece of when you can teach someone how to self coach, then they can make more empowering decisions for themselves. That's what's going to change your life for the better. And so at the beginning, you do, you like, it's like when you're driving in the dark. It's like you've got to put the headlights on, but you're all you're doing, you're only seeing the little bit in front of you. You don't see the whole road, but you have that clarity of what's in front of you. And so you then have that clarity of taking your next steps. And so what happens is when we first get in that car and want to start driving, we want to see that whole journey. And look, yes, put in your put in your GPS, your destination. You need to do that. So begin with the end in mind, but then. Just focus on that next step. Don't get in that overwhelm of you have to get it all right. Like we get stuck in this perfectionist mindset of like, unless I can do this perfectly, unless I can get this right, I can't do anything 
better. I can't, I, what's the point in doing it? Because I don't have the, you know, I don't know how to, to get it right or to do it right or to be perfect in, in, in what I'm creating. And it's not about that. It's that, that keeps us stuck. But when we can just focus on what's in front of us, what's that next step? And it's those tiny moments, it's those tiny decisions that we make on a daily basis that compound to mm. leading a better life. So if you make a decision that makes your life 1% or 2% better, just think about that. By the end of the year, how much better is your life going to be? If you can make, even if it's just 10 decisions that you do differently, but your life then becomes 10% better, what does that look like after a month, after six months, after a year? And then the other thing what happens is when you start being able to do that, you can then do more of those decisions, which then have a bigger compounding effect. And that's when it starts to snowball, but not at the beginning. At the beginning, it's, you know, it's challenging because you don't know what you don't know. Mm. Like I didn't know before I went to the pain psychologist. <laughs> absolutely. And and you're absolutely right about that because so many people um you know go to the end of their lives not realizing that like you said it only takes one week you know you've lived maybe 99 years you couldn't find a week in your life that you could actually give to changing your brain and small things like that and there's one thing that i discovered um i don't know if, if you're okay to hear this but i used to smoke and I went on the internet because I wanted to quit because my kids, um, you know, were growing up and I didn't want to be that dad. And I actually realized it takes three seconds to get past a craving. Now you can imagine, and I practiced that one, two, three, you no longer need a cigarette. And it takes a lot of mindset as well. And, and the why to want to actually do that. Now you can imagine Every one of those people dying of emphysema, causing secondhand smoking to people, they don't have three seconds to take control of their brain. So you can imagine there's so many other things you keep referring to compounding. And I think there's, you know, statements on the Internet or in life that those that know about compounding benefit from it. Those that don't pay um, you know, those that can collect on that. So it's it's absolutely amazing what you're taking people on. But hey, this is about you. What's next? What oh, I was gonna oh sorry, I was gonna say there's a lot of studies actually to show that people who have a really strong connection to their future self make better decisions in the now and actually have a better quality of life. So there's you know, it's there's actually um a lot of data to back that up. And I think that's what I uh, ultimately create, you know, in the in the Lifestyle Creator Program. It is about investing in your future self, but you're going to actually start, be, like, um, realising those benefits today by doing that. But that connection, like, that's that's the difference. And it's like having better quality relationships. Like, your biggest gift that you can give to anybody else is your is personal development. So it's, it might be a different way of looking at it. <laughs> Oh, absolutely, because you're giving them your best self, not a representative that society expects and not what you think people absolutely want from you. And I value that uh, sentiment that when you're friends with your future self, you would want to make sure that you arrive at that position in a safe and sound sort of manner while still enjoying it. Because if you, if you're not you know, aligned with your future self, why would you want to support someone that you don't like? So, you know, if you like that person already, you will do things, connect with people and uh, showcase what it is that you possibly can. Let's speak about Just your... like you did with your smoking, letting go of that. So high five to you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Fantastic. Now let's uh, talk about future coach elk. What exciting projects or in incentives um, are on the horizon? that our viewers should keep out uh, for that you're working on? Yeah, so I'll be, um, uh, I'll, I'll always be doing, I'll have masterclasses up on my website. So you can just check to see if any of those resonate with you. I do those 
approximately about once a month. And as I said, next uh, in April, I will be starting, I'll be launching the group coaching cohort with the lifestyle creator. So we can do that together. And so you will not only learn from me, but other like-minded people in the group, group coaching. And it's really powerful and it's fun too. So it's, it's, it's a nice way of doing it. I mean, you can buy the program on its own, but it's really it's it you you get faster results when you can do it um together absolutely or there's also one on one if you if you really want to have like deep dive with it i also offer one on one um sessions as well so there there is that too <laughs> absolutely in my culture we've got a statement if you want to go far you go alone if you want to go further you go together I really value the time and the value that you've given us on the show today. Uh, Elka, I know we could talk and talk and talk, but <laughs> I think people have gotten an understanding of what it is that you do and how you are making a difference in the world out there. Is there any last words for those that are just like, oh, it ain't about that. I will just live my life the way that I've always been and we'll figure it out when the time comes. Yeah, you can do that and you you're like if nothing changes, nothing changes, but yeah. not making a choice is a choice <laughs> as well. So if you, you know, even if you just do one tiny thing, like what's one small thing that you can do to move you forward or towards um, a better life, then why wouldn't you? <laughs> Absolutely. Well, thank you so much. And um, yeah, folks, what an enlightening and invigorating discussion we've had today. I mean, it puts a lot of things in perspective. You know, so many people are just brushing things under the rug. And if you go into somebody's house with uh, a cupboard that's got a few lumps in there, just know that they're just brushing things under there and not looking at them. So if you're ready to kickstart the next chapter of your life, with clarity, confidence, and purpose, be sure to check out the Lifestyle Creator program. And I will be putting the links in the show notes there. And um, I really believe um, if you're not investing in yourself, you're just not only shortchanging your life, but also the lives of those that you actually care about. And I don't think you're that selfish. So, you know, investing in yourself is the greatest gift that you can give, uh, first of all, to the ones that you love or claim to love or to your future self. You obviously do not want to arrive safely to an early grave. All right. Like what um, Elka says, YOLO, you only live once. You might as well make the most of it. So until next time, I encourage you to stay prosperous, stay purposeful, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more enriching conversations like this one. Help me thank Elke once again. Oh, is it Coach Elke? Is um um you know for all of the things that we've spoken about. Um, be sure to check out the links in the show notes below. This is Prosper. We're signing off. Wishing you all a life filled with joy, fulfillment, and possibilities. Bye for now. <music>